Welcome to our e-learning video on the subject of consociationalism. Consociationalism is a unique approach to managing conflicts and power sharing in divided societies. In this video, we will explore the key concepts, principles, and examples of consociationalism as a form of governance. So, let's dive in and understand this intriguing concept in detail. Consociationalism is a political theory and practice that focuses on power-sharing arrangements among different societal groups, such as ethnic, religious, or linguistic groups, within a single political system. It is often used as a mechanism to address conflicts and promote stability in deeply divided societies. Consociationalism is different from other forms of democracy, as it emphasizes power-sharing among diverse groups rather than the rule of the majority. One of the key concepts of consociationalism is the idea of a grand coalition, which means that different groups or parties with diverse interests come together to form a government. This allows for the representation of multiple perspectives and ensures that various groups have a say in decision-making processes. The grand coalition often involves proportional representation, where the number of seats a party gets in the government is proportional to its share of the popular vote. This approach promotes inclusivity and aims to prevent the domination of one group over others. Another crucial principle of consociationalism is the idea of segmental autonomy. This means that different groups are granted a level of autonomy in specific areas of governance, such as education, cultural affairs, or administration. This autonomy allows groups to preserve their distinct identities, practices, and interests, while also participating in the overall governance of the country. It helps to address the concerns and aspirations of different groups and prevent them from feeling marginalized or excluded. Consociationalism can also include measures for minority rights protection, such as guarantees for freedom of religion, language rights, and representation in key institutions of power. These measures aim to safeguard the interests of minority groups and create a sense of inclusivity and fairness in the governance system. Examples of consociationalism can be found in several countries around the world. For instance, Belgium is often cited as an example of consociationalism, with its complex system of power sharing among different linguistic groups. Another example is Northern Ireland, where consociational arrangements have been used to manage conflicts between Catholics and Protestants. Switzerland, with its power sharing arrangements among different linguistic and cultural groups, is also often considered a consociational model. However, it's important to note that consociationalism also has its criticisms. Some argue that it can perpetuate the divisions between groups and lead to a lack of integration and cohesion in society. Others argue that it can result in a tyranny of the minority, where smaller groups have disproportionate power, leading to instability or gridlock in decision-making processes. In conclusion, consociationalism is a unique approach to managing conflicts and power-sharing in divided societies. It emphasizes power sharing among diverse groups, promotes inclusivity and autonomy, and aims to prevent the domination of one group over others. While it has been used in various countries as a mechanism to address conflicts and promote stability, it also has its criticisms. Understanding the principles and examples of consociationalism can help us appreciate its complexities and implications in the field of governance. Thank you for joining our e-learning video on consociationalism. We hope this video has provided you with a better understanding of this subject. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more educational content. Stay tuned for our next video. Thank you.